In September 1933, on a clear moonlight night, the steamer City of Rome was proceeding up the coast on her way to Boston. At about 10.15, a few miles off Block Island, the lookout sighted a faint white light to starboard. Four away! Brought on the starboard bow, sir! Coming onto the bridge immediately, the captain kept the light under continuous observation for 20 minutes. During this time, the bearing of the light remained almost unchanged. Finally, having decided he was overtaking a small tug or fishing vessel, he ordered the steamer's course changed two points to the left to give the stranger a wider berth. A moment later, the lookout made out a dim red light, slightly below and to the right of the white light. Realizing that the other vessel was not an overtaken vessel, but was crossing the steamer's course, the lookout shouted, Red light on the starboard bow, sir! The lights were those of the submarine S-51, on a practice cruise out of New London. Look out! Don't run us down! Hard right, full astern. Reverse your engines! Back her down! Holy God, she's gonna hit us, sir! The news flashed throughout the country. 37 drowned as submarine sinks. Then faint tappings were heard aboard the sunken craft, and hopes ran high. While howling Atlantic storms hampered their efforts, divers worked frantically 180 feet below. The tappings grew fainter. And finally, all was silent. And now, just why did 37 Navy men meet this tragic end? Let us analyze the causes of the collision. One of the principal causes was traced to the submarine. The reason? Improper running lights. It was found that the mast headlight was not the required minimum 20 feet above the hull, but only 11 feet. Furthermore, the red light was so constructed and in such close proximity to the mast headlight, only three and a half feet apart, that the visibility of the relatively dim red light was blotted out at any considerable distance by the greater brilliance of the white light. Confident that the steamer would see her lights and respect her privilege to cross from right to left, the S-51 had proceeded steadily ahead. In the subsequent court trials, the Navy's contention was that the submarine was a special type vessel and therefore not subject to the ordinary rules of the road. The decisions of both higher and lower courts disagreed with this point of view, holding that it is apparent that the rules regulating lights were meant to apply to ships of war. And finally, the safety of navigation depends upon uniformity. Only so can reliance be placed upon what masters see at night. However, as in the majority of collision cases, the other vessel also was seriously at fault. Equal blame was put on the city of Rome for failure to reduce her speed when in doubt as to the other vessel's movements and identity. She was held at fault also for neglecting to signal her change of course to the left with the required two short blasts. And so, because the rules of the road were disregarded, a tragic chapter was written in the history of the United States Navy.